Taylor Guitars manufactures the fantastic and popular GS Mini line of guitars, but there's a bunch of options in that line. Which one's right for you? This is our 2019 definitive guide to all that is GS Mini. Stick around. So, Taylor Guitars GS Mini, it's been an incredibly popular guitar for Taylor. In fact, it's good enough for the God of Thunder. If you haven't seen the clip of Thor himself, Fat Thor at that, playing his code GS Mini. I heard myself today see if I still feel the that's real. What have I become? So there you go. The uh, GS Mini is popular with guitar players and Marvel heroes alike. Uh, the GS Mini has been in production for a number of years now. It's finding its uh, way into the hands of many guitar players, people learning uh, that are new to the instrument and people who want something that's smaller and uh, travel friendly. And what Taylor intended to do when they set out to build the GS Mini is to build a modern parlor guitar. And they have, and to, if, you, if you're not familiar with the GS Mini, let me just kind of give you an idea of what the winning formula here is. So it's called a GS Mini because it is a shrunken down Grand Symphony body shape. So Taylor's Grand Symphony is in their lineup. It's wider than a Dreadnought in the lower bout, but with a tighter waist, kind of like a Grand Auditorium guitar in their, uh, in their lineup as well. So this is that style of dimension, okay, but shrunken down. It's a short scale, it's 23 and a half inch scale. So for reference, a typical short scale full size guitar is about an inch longer, actually a little bit more than that. And a full size tailored standard long scale guitar is typically 25 and a half inches, which is two inches longer scale. So what that gives you is a shorter neck, a sh shorter overall dimension of the guitar. It also means that the frets are a little bit closer together, uh, both initially and as you move up the neck. So the overall size makes it very friendly for traveling, throw it in the bag that it comes with and you can take it most places pretty easily. Uh, it also makes it nice for people who are smaller stature, uh, people who are petite, people who are children and just still growing, what have you. Uh, my son, who's actually taller than me, he has one. He loves it just fine. So that's the GS Mini in a nutshell as far as the size goes. Construction-wise, what Taylor opted to do was to make an affordable guitar that features a solid top with uh, layered laminate back and sides. And I say layered because it's not HPL or anything like that. It's real wood grain, uh, both on the outside and the inside with a filler of poplar that's glued together. Uh, this laminate layered construction means that it doesn't move as much as solid wood would. Wood would. <laughs> but um, it is stronger. Uh, and it, it's going to be a little bit better when it comes to temperature and humidity and just kind of bumps and things like that. Uh, it's more rough and tumble than solid wood would be on the back and sides, which again uh, benefits from the fact that it's often geared towards travel. Now, this smaller guitar uh, features an ebony fingerboard and bridge. Okay, there's no rich light or man-made materials here. Taylor is using ebony. Uh, the headstock up here, uh, a few years ago, got an overlay of wood, walnut, with a gold Taylor logo instead of the Lexon plastic that used to be up here. And then these uh, tuners from Taylor. It's a Sapele neck, and there's an option for electronics. What we want to do today is talk about some of the options that are available in different models, why you might choose one over the other, and then play them for you so you can hear the difference. So this one that I'm holding is the entry-level GS Mini. It features a Sitka spruce top with layered Sapele back and sides, which looks a lot like mahogany. It's a very pleasing wood. There's not a whole lot going on. It's just nice to look at, but not on a bunch of wild grain. Now, the other option from here would be this guy, and we're gonna replace these as we go and this one features some really nice stripy ebony grain on the fingerboard. This is the GS Mini M for mahogany. So just like the one that we looked at, it is 
kind of the entry into the lineup, but it features a mahogany top instead of a spruce top. Neither of these models at this point have any kind of electronics built into them. There is an option though to get the ES Go, which is a plug-in ready uh, magnetic pickup from Taylor that fits in the sound hole and connects to a clip that is built in right here. That's a great option if you want to add uh, electronics later or aren't sure initially and end up wanting to have them after the fact. It's probably a better option than most sound hole uh, pickups because I'm gonna tell you one of the ways that Taylor gets the big sound they get out of this guitar, in addition to the scallop bracing and, and relief, route, relief route that they do, is that it has a larger sound hole than you would typically see on an acoustic guitar and really gets that volume out of there. But there's a little tab in there that you can fit that pickup into if you wanna to go to it. So on either of these that we just looked at, the GS Mini and GS Mini M, you can choose between a spruce top or a mahogany top. If you go with the mahogany top, you are going to get a rounder, more mid-range rich tone. A lot of people describe it as sounding very warm because you're, you're hearing that very round mid-range coming out of it. It's not as loud as the spruce. It is not as articulate as the spruce. Um, it doesn't have the brightness and the projection that the spruce does. Instead, it has this mellow, rich warmth to it that a lot of people prefer. So these are both great options. And I'm glad to see this back because it wasn't in the lineup for a period of time uh, without the electronics. So that's the GS Mini M. After these two, you move up into the options of having pickups. And we're gonna look at three different options that are currently available as of the making of this video in the lineup. So we're gonna put this one back. You can see the back of my head now. This is the GS Mini E Walnut. So it's a GS Mini with a spruce top, figured walnut back and sides with the ESB system on it from Taylor. Now, if you're not familiar with this preamp, here's what you're getting. You're getting an ES2 pickup element here. So if you look at the bridge on these, there's three dots. Those are pole pieces that are adjustable for the piezo pickup element that's in each one. That element is just barely touching the back of the saddle that allows for a very natural linear acoustic tone without the quackiness that we would normally associate with a piezo pickup. It's then running through this preamp. This preamp has a built-in tuner along with volume and tone controls and is powered by stacked CR2032 or something to that batteries. These are kind of like the watch batteries or the same batteries that you would see like in a Snark tuner or something like that. So those are in there stacked. Uh, CR2032, yeah, I had it right. So that's what you get from the, uh, the walnut version of this. And you can see the walnut's very pretty. And like I said before, this is not any kind of high pressure laminate. This is actual wood grain. As a result, these are all going to look a little bit different. So if you go through a bunch of photos on our website of different ones that we have in stock or call and speak to a salesperson to send you photos, you're going to see that there's different grain patterns available, different coloring, some Times there's gonna be some flame that's happening in the walnut, things like that. That's all because it's actual wood, despite the fact that it's layered laminate wood. So there's also occasionally limited edition versions of this, which is what we're going to look at next. So right now, this looks just like the guitar that I just had in my hands. This, however, is a limited edition Ovancol GS Mini. So it's the same spruce top that we saw. The back and sides, however, are different. Instead of walnut, it's ovuncle. And just like the walnut, each one's going to be unique and different based upon the grain of the actual wood that was used. Now, sound-wise, they're going to sound about the same. So here's the thing, I'm, and I'm going to give you a disclaimer, and I'm also going to throw Bob Taylor under the bus a little bit. Um, so be, laminate back and sides, the back and sides generally contribute to the EQ, is what I say. Uh, the tone of the guitar. So most of your sound comes from the top and that determines your response and the initial tonal offerings that are there. So if you change it from a spruce top to a mahogany top or to a koa top, what have you, that's going to affect the sound dramatically. In an all solid wood guitar, having the back and sides made of mahogany or rosewood or maple affects your overtones and the response uh, that the fullness of the tone gives you. So you're going to hear a difference in the guitar based upon the back and sides. That's not always the case, or really isn't the case, I should say, generally speaking, with layered back and sides. However, this is actual wood, even though it's two pieces glued to a piece of poplar and everything, 
Um, and some people have said that they can hear the difference. So Bob Taylor in their Wood and Steel once answered this question with, it really shouldn't affect the tone, but because some people are going to hear a difference, we're just going to go ahead and say, it probably does affect the tone to varying degrees, and it depends upon how good your ears are to hear the difference. Okay, so there's my disclaimer for you. Most of it is going to be aesthetic difference, okay? So whether you prefer the walnut or you think this looks really nice with the orange and dark brown and reddish hues that this beautiful mm -hmm. Ovoncall has as an option. It's also limited. And I wanted to show this to you because you might be watching this video in 2020 or 2021, who knows? There's probably going to be a different limited. They've done limited runs with maple before uh, that were very cool. So keep an eye out for those. It's going to be a lot like the walnut, but with so with a spruce top, but with a different tone wood for the back and sides. Same pickup, and this brings us to the last offering that's really at the top of the offering for the GS Mini. So at the very top of the line from GS Mini is the GS Mini Koa, and full disclaimers, I own one. So there you go. I'm a fan. Um, my son has the the walnut one though, so we have both in the household. I can play either one and get the benefits of it. So you should just buy one of each, you know? Just, you know, gotta catch them all. Anyways, so the GS Mini E Koa is a Koa GS Mini. It's a solid Hawaiian Koa top with layered Hawaiian Koa back and sides. And again, the grain is going to vary wildly on these based upon Koa. So this example has some nice sapwood right there, which people tend to love, which is why I picked it for this video. Um, so. It, it's probably already gone by the time you've seen this, but you could still call and find out. That's usually how these things go. Uh, so it's a solid Koa top. It's, it's layered uh, laminate Koa back and sides. Has the same pickup and everything. Here's what's gonna happen tone-wise. So it's kind of the difference we heard between spruce and mahogany, right? Spruce is bright and it's projecting. Mahogany and any hardwood top like Koa, what it does is it kind of clamps down on the sound. It compresses it and really rounds the tone. So as you dig into it, it kind of becomes even more compressed, like a tube amp, if you've ever played or you know hit that compressor pedal and you kind of get some squishiness. That's what it's doing. Instead of getting louder and louder, it's getting rounder and rounder as you dig into it. You're going to have that warm, rich mid-range that you have from Mahogany, but you're gonna have a little bit more bass from Koa. So if we look at a spectrum of it, there's a little bit more low end, and there's a little bit more high end, so there's a bit more bite to it, similar to maple. A lot of times, we might say that Koa has some characteristics of a lot of our favorite tone woods. It has some of the richness of rosewood, it has the nice mid-range and compression that mahogany has, and it has some of that crisp, uh, transparent high end like we get from maple. All in a package that looks absolutely stunning, and is from a relatively rare tone wood that grows in one place in the entire world. Hawaii. So it looks stunning. It sounds fantastic. There's a reason it sits at the top of the range. Um, and they vary very greatly. So uh, if you're in the market for a Koa, you can go on and look at photos of these. Uh, like I said, we have most of them up on our website or the sales staff can send you additional photos as they come in. But you'll see that each one looks very, very different from the other one. So to recap, right before we play all of these for you, I want you to listen to this. The spruce versions, whether there's with a pickup or without a pickup, are going to sound relatively the same. Okay, you're going to have that brightness and that projection and this great balance from all of the spruce ones. So that's the GS Mini, the GS Mini E Walnut, and the GS Mini E Ovuncle. And you can hear for yourself if there's a difference between the Ovuncle and the Walnut. The mahogany is going to make it a lot warmer, a lot more rich mid-range, and then the koa is going to have that as well, but with some more treble and a little bit more bass. So let's see if you can pick those out as we go through and play them for you. Check it out.
So there you have it. In the mix of these guitars, there is a GS Mini that is right for you. Hopefully this video helped you understand the differences in the models, the aesthetic choices, the tone woods, and the pickup options that are available. If you have any questions, please comment below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching. If you're new here, make sure that you subscribe, turn on your notifications, give us a thumbs up, and if you know someone else who's been searching for a GS Mini, shoot this video over to them so that they can benefit from it just like you have. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.